What is going on ladies and gentlemen? It is Jake, better known as Star Coding, coming at you with yet another video where we talk about what else than computer science. So it is episode three of our JWT series, our JSON Web Token series. And you know, we've been talking about a lot of theory in our first two episodes, you know, what is a JWT, what is a refresh token. But now let's actually look at the code, how this is implemented because hey, you all have applications where you want to use this. Let's show how it's implemented. So I'm going to stop talking. Let's look at the code. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is the code we got going on. So we're using Express and we have an authentication server. That is great. We're looking at a solid 110 lines of code to go through. Uh, you know, a couple of libraries here. I was debating if I should code it on the fly while recording, but honestly, guys, it would have been a cringe experience. Okay, you know how much, you know how much like back and forth it is when it's coding. I cannot memorize the syntax. It's just I'm googling the most pathetic things. So <laughs> it's all chill. We're actually coding, but um, this is our authentication server, and let's kind of you know show what libraries we're using. We're gonna be using the JSON Web Token library for this one there is this um jose it's actually a josc library that we'll be using in another video um but this is the simple jwt as you can see up here so uh we'll just be using our json web token right here uh which is a library here i'll pull it up for you it is going to be open source and i think it's provided by oauth and microsoft which is sick ladies and gentlemen it is sick it just got like you know 8 million downloads, weekly downloads, so trusted source, we love it. Um, and we're, it is an authentication server, so as you might imagine, we're going to be logging in. The first thing we're going to do is grab that payload. And honestly, as a best practice, we're definitely not going to include the password on that JSON web token. They'll authenticate through some other means, you know, they'll talk to a user database somewhere and authenticate. And then once they authenticate, they get the token. So there's no need to put a password in our, inside our JWT token. But there is a use case to put like maybe some like IDs, ID fields, maybe some other important information about the user that you want, just to make the application run quicker and more smooth essentially. So we'll grab the payload and then we will, you know, create a JWT and sign. Luckily, the library comes and can make it in one line, one quick line. So that's super cool. So we're making our access token and our refresh token. This third parameter over here can just be used to supply any other header information, any other, you know, properties. Um, we could make commas and go further. And if we open up our JWT handbook, our classic handbook provided by OAuth, um, there will actually be some really cool, you know, there's, there's some cool information about the headers that you can put. Um, we're not going to necessarily worry about that, but it is one line of code. And that doesn't really tell you a whole lot of what's going underneath what's happening under the hood. And what you can kind of see is that, hey, we have some JSON parameters, some JSON keys and values. And all we're going to do is base 64 encode them and put them on this token. So very simple. Here's some sample code of literally just, you know, our header, we just base 60 for the guy. Uh, payload, we just base 60 for the guy, then we concatenate them down here. As well as, um, you know, decoding it, it's the same thing. Here's decoding base 64. This is pretty unsecure. Um, they haven't added the signature yet, which is what they do in this section. And as you can see here, what really happens is we have a, HMAC fun function, HMAC, um, and we encode everything with, you know, a secret and some SHA-256 hashing algorithm. So that way it's like, hey, this is a signature. Do they match? Um, if you tamper anything, it's going to mess up the signature. So essentially once it's signed, you cannot modify this. And, and our secret access tokens are in our environment variables. And you know, we just use the crypto library to generate some giant strings, one for our refresh token and one for our access token. Uh, there's also an API URL down here that is going to be used for when we come to actually serving the application. 
Now, if we, you know, authenticate our user, that means they have access to see our secured resources. So that means that we can come over here. We can now access some resource and the way that node works, we can specify a call function of some sort. And right here, we kind of just have, you know, authenticate token. Oh, it was supposed to be a line, it's an error, which is cool. So that means that before we go into the code below, we will go to authenticate token to make sure that they are in fact an authenticated user. And that functions conveniently right below. Uh, the authenticate token, you know, if we kind of recall, let's see if we can kind of draw it out. We have, you know, a authentication header with two parts. There was the bearer part, and then there was the um, actual token. So, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, I'm just still getting used to using these arrows, guys. Okay, we're trying to draw on the screen, make some visuals. But we would definitely have, you know, a bear in front and then our actual token. So this code right here is simply just going to be, um, you know, grabbing the actual base64 encoded token. And what we'll want to do is say, hey, does it exist? If it does, sweet. If not, hey, man, um, you're unauthorized to be here. Sorry, you don't have it. And if it is there, but we, so we will re-verify the token and then hash it um, with the secret key. And if that doesn't return the same, you know, output, essentially what it's going to do is it's going to rehash, you know, the, the token with the secret key. It's going to compare the two values. If they are the same, we're golden. If they're not, whoa, you've been tampering uh, and you're going to get, you know, a, a status error message. But if you succeed, hey, you're good. On to the next, um, and next is just you know additional middleware if there is that. If not, we just you know continue as normal, and you are allowed to be redirected to the secured resource. And in the last video, we were talking about the refresh tokens. So how will that process actually play out? If we remember from you know our previous diagram, we kind of have a web browser, and once our access token you know expires. We're going to come over here and request with our old refresh token. Hey, can I get a new one? Can I get a new access token? Thanks. And the server is going to look at its database and then it's going to pull out, you know, oh, you're good. I think you're good. And if, it, if we are good, it's going to come over here, like check it out. And then bam, we get a new access token. That'd be crazy cool. Um, and so how this actually plays out, if we look, we're going to grab the refresh token from the body. And if it's null, you know, hey, you don't have a refresh token, I'm sorry, but you're unauthorized to be here. Um, if, you know, this refresh token isn't in our database, we're just gonna throw a forbidden, like um, you are, you know, you have the token, but you're not checking the criteria, buddy, so you're forbidden. Um, and then finally, we're going to actually verify after we get it as well. If it's been modified, you're going to be, you know, forbidden as well. And if you do check out, if everything checks out, we'll just make a new access token with your user data and then bam, just send it your way. Simple as that. <clears throat> you know, finally, and if the user's logging out, what we do, we really just delete their refresh token. Um, if we delete the refresh token, that means that next time they go to log in or next time they go to access a resource, you know, it's going to make that query like, Hey, do you have an access token? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. If you don't, do you have a refresh token? If you do, it's going to try to, if the refresh token is located on your like storage on your client, it talks to the authentication server, but it doesn't have, you know, anything for you. Um, and so it asks you to re -log in essentially. That's how that would work. So what we'll do is we'll just delete the token that's on the server and be done with it. And yeah, that is the code. That's the code review. Now let's actually look at how it works. So what I want to do is just open up Postman real quick and show what's you know happening when we fire these requests. If we go to you know our authentication server and try to post login, so try to log in. Um, we're imagining that, you know, we've logged into the server and it's authenticated our username and our password. And so now we're giving said token, the said token. And so that process has happened. We make the token and here we go. We click send. 
What we get back is an access token and a refresh token. Beautiful, perfect. Now I have 20 seconds to use this, so pardon me real quick. As we go over here, we go to our authorize header and we send it and we get some information back. So this, is, this was the department page. As you can see, there was like an IT, a sales and a marketing department, which is fine. Um, we use our authorization header with, you know, the value being, you know, bear token, the JWT token. Great. It's been more than 20 seconds now since I've been talking. If I send this again, we're going to get a forbidden because it is now expired. And so if we want to unexpire this guy, what we're going to come do is we're going to come over here. We're going to grab our refresh token. We're going to go to our refresh token pass in that new value, send it over, and we get a new access token. So now if I come and copy this guy, if all works well, I should be able to come over here, repaste this guy in, and still be forbidden. Oh, what? You know, I don't think we're actually... What, what would cause that? Well, guys, there was actually an error in the code, uh, logic error, exactly. So, you know, when I was sending that refresh token, I was getting back an access token, uh, essentially. And that access token was the entire user, if we recall, it was just the user, and we sign it with, you know, the secret key, and bam. Well, the problem is, is we're signing information that has an expiration date already. So essentially what we were doing was we were like, hey, let's sign this entire user object that also has an expiration date attached to it. So the expiration date was not changing. It wasn't incrementing. Um, so actually what we ended up doing in the code, if we look, instead of having it just the entire user object, which was there previously, we'll just have a payload set, which would be all the relevant user information. Um, and that way, you know, when we do this, we don't get um, the same the same I guess request back so now if I you know try to access this and it's forbidden like hey you need to refresh your token okay I can go over here let me get a new access token and now that I'm not in not signing the exact same expiration date if we come over here and change we should receive our data so yeah First off, test your code before you make a video. And second off, um, yeah, <laughs> we don't want to encrypt or we don't want to send the entire user object when we're getting a refresh token, only the payload. And so we're getting forbidden now. We can go over here, refresh again, get a new value, a new expiration date, come over here, change it out. Bam, and so this is, yeah, kind of how that whole JWT is going to work. Now you might be asking yourself, Jake, so this is obviously, you know, JWT is great, that is cool. However, what if, you know, like, I don't trust the user? What if there's some like kind of sensitive information in this payload? You know, this Jake, with those like ID or something, and you're like, ah. Do I really trust my users to be able to see that information? Because what if you're like a script kitty like you or, you know, a hacker like you? What if you're malicious? Um, there is a way to encrypt our payload so that way that, you know, whenever we're sending it off, uh, the user will not be able to see what the actual payload data is. There would be two ways of doing this. One would be to encrypt, you know, the individual data that is important. So we could encrypt our username before sending it in the JSON component or in the JSON web token. So we could be like, hey, take our username, encrypt it, and then let's make an access token. That way you have encrypted data. Or we could make something called a JWE, which is going to be our web encrypted um, data structure that is OPEC to third parties so that you know your user that's looking at the at the JSON web token will not be able to see those plain text uh, payloads and headers. So that will be in a different video that is going to be a separate topic because this is kind of dragged on a little bit going over the implementation. Um, hope you've enjoyed. Hope you learned something new. 
And as always, thanks for watching.